Someone DM'd me on Instagram asking for advice on this subject. And it's funny because this actually happened to me too at one point. I replied to him on Instagram that I'll go over everything in this video. So I'll start with his story. He told me he met someone on a Discord server and he knew that person was transgender, male to female. They started hanging out and playing a lot of games together. And then one day, this individual admitted to him that they low-key are in love with him. Now, I asked the guy on Instagram, why bring up that this person is transgender? Like, why even, you know, bring this up? It's like the first time you said someone has a crush on you and it's transgender. Why even say that? You know what I'm saying? Like the title of this video. And he told me it's because that person told them that they've been rejected a few times in the past because they revealed themselves to be transgender and people want to quote real girl. So this guy is afraid of saying no, which is his answer, but he hasn't given it yet. But his answer is no for that exact reason. He, first of all, never looked at his friend that way. Second of all, he's into biological women. But if he says that, he knows that this person is going to take it the wrong way, whether however he says it, they're going to take it. You know, it's just it's unavoidable. They, they just know that they're going to hurt this person because this guy wants a real girl or a biological woman per se. Now, let me tell y'all a story and the way I handled it. I think I did it in a good way because it caused the least amount of damage. But I mean, I think rejection comes with damage regardless. So about seven years ago or so, uh, maybe a little bit more, when I used to play Team Fortress 2 a lot, there was a time where I played Dust Bowl 24-7. If you know, you know, TF2 Dust Bowl 24-7 is chaotic and it's fun. If you don't know, it's just a, a game map for Team Fortress 2 that a lot of people play on. At that time point, I wasn't very edgy about my friends list on Steam. I would just accept anybody who added me. And there was this individual who would always be on the Dust Bowl server with me. We never DM'd, we never DM'd on Steam at first. When I would join the server, I would just hear them in voice chat say, hey, HX, because my name wasn't Aqua at the time, it was HX. And I would be like, yo, now their voice, and voice, remember they said that in voice chat, their voice was very feminine. But it wasn't feminine to where I felt like it was a female. It was like a feminine guy voice. You get what I'm saying? Like, but I didn't care though. Like who, who cares really? This person is nice to me and we say hi to each other when we join the server. You know what I'm saying? So it is what it is. Now, I remember one time on the server, uh, one time the server was actually offline for some reason. I don't remember what, why it was offline. And this person messaged me on Steam asking if the server was offline for me too. The person who says hi to me. And I said, yeah, it's down for me as well. So eventually the conversation kept going when we talked about our personal lives. It was the first time we actually did speak personally. Before I remember, we were just Dust Bowl friends. Now, some of the things he told me, I'll keep confidential because who knows, maybe he'll see his video one day, but nobody's gonna know it's him or them rather, uh, unless they say something, you know what I'm saying? But respectfully, I'll keep a lot of what they said private. I don't even remember most of the stuff because it's been so long, but they told me that they've been on meds, like like hormone meds, and they, they've been having trouble transitioning because their parents and they're like, I'm grown, I'm 21, I should be allowed to make my own decisions. But since I live in their house, they're trying to control me, you know, that type of stuff. And they said something very specific to me. They said, HX, they've been in love with this guy who's on this Dust Bowl server with us. And this guy who they're in love with, he doesn't come online as much as we do, but they're in love with them. But they're afraid of saying something because they know this this guy is completely straight. And maybe I'm wrong for saying this, but I said, why not just ask or dance around the question? Maybe you'll get an answer that way instead of waiting for the inevitable. You know, you, you're crushing on this guy who we play with on the server who doesn't come on as much. I mean, maybe hey, just shoot a message, be like, hey, what's up? And then blah, blah, you know, try to get try to have personal conversation with him, too, like you're having with me. So a few days later, this individual messaged me and told me that. They didn't ask them out, but they mentioned being transgender. And then ever since then, that guy they were crushing on has been acting very distant and not replying to them. Rather, when they first told them, their reaction wasn't very nice. This dude apparently was weirded out or something like that. I don't remember the exact details of how they reacted, but it, it, it definitely made this person feel unwelcome. So since this happened, this individual is extremely depressed. And since we had that conversation and I decided to, I, that was my 
suggestion to maybe talk to them and, you know, dance around the question or, or reveal to them that they're transgender, I felt like I was responsible to be there for them emotionally. So I was there as somebody to lean on because they got rejected. You know what I'm saying? And I was there to support them as they were going through re their rejection and everything. And I guess because I was comforting and a safe haven for this individual, they started to catch feelings for me since I'm being so nice to them and caring for them at least. And there were a few times while this was happening that I felt a bit uncomfortable from how they were speaking to me. But I took it at first as homey stuff, like platonic. And eventually there were times that they were pushing it a bit extra, saying things like, I love you to me. And now here's the thing. I say I love you to my friends too. I do it to a lot of people, but you can tell the context. I'm saying when I say I love you to people, like I say I love you as a friend, a homie. I don't mean it like, I love you, let's be romantically intertwined or something. And I could tell this individual though, when they were saying it to me, their context, it was romantic. And I caught it early, but I realized this individual has a crush on me. And this was the first time in my life someone ever had a crush on me. Well, it felt like that. I mean, yeah, I was already in a few relationships at that time period in my life. I already had some, you know, exes, but I never had someone crush on me and I wasn't interested in return. Like, it wasn't that obvious, you know what I'm saying? And they were asking me romantic questions randomly about if I love them and stuff like that. It's like random, like, okay, you remember I said I love you to my friends? But I don't go to my friends and be like, yo, you love me, bro? Like, what? Like, yo, do you love me, man? Like, I'll be like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'll be asking stuff like that. So, and I had to plan to let this person down gently, but I didn't want to because I felt like I was going to lose a friend. So... With how this video started, I was in a similar situation. I also didn't look at them in this way uh, ever. I wasn't romantically interested in them. I'm just not into it. I actually think I was crushing on someone else at that time who was uh, in one of my classes in real life. So when well, I say in real life, yeah, I had like, I was, I, was, I was in college at that time. So what I did was I told them I didn't want to do this I love you thing anymore. And yo, it just, you know, I feel like, I told him that I feel like you mean it in a different way in that, yo, honestly, you should be saving these emotions for someone who is going to give you that same affection back. Because if you chase me with these feelings, you're going to be disappointed because my answer or how I'm just not feeling the same way you're feeling about me, how I would feel about you. And I think that was a good response, even though it did upset them because Again, I don't think there there's a way of like rejecting someone without upsetting them to begin with. But me saying that, it wasn't like, ew, so gross, go away. Or like, no, I'm not into you. Stop romancing me. It wasn't like that. It was just me not rejecting and invalidating their emotions. They're valid emotions, but they're in the wrong place. Unfortunately, we didn't really have many private and personal conversations since I let them down. I could tell that it hurt, but... I never felt bad about it because I did the best I can to be there for them emotionally when they were going through their first thing. You know what I'm saying? And I told them their romance should be with someone who wants it. It's not bad that they feel romance or they're crushing on people, but they need to pick someone who is willing to accept that. They continue to do that. You know what I'm saying? They continue to pick people who aren't into it. Like that guy who rejected him, rejected them. And going back to the guy on Instagram... I think you're also at risk of losing your friend too. The moral of the story is though, and why I shared mine, is to emphasize that when you tell this person how you feel, don't invalidate their emotions. Tell them that they're going to end up hurting themselves by, by them wasting a lot of effort trying to get with you. And even when you're, even when you're certain that you don't want it, you got to tell them that. Like you got to tell them like, yo, that's cool that you feel these ways. That's, I wouldn't say like it's cool, but you know, tell them that. I understand you feel this way and there's nothing wrong with feeling this way, but just somebody else, it's meant for somebody else. You know, I think the more you allow this to happen, the more you're in a sense leading them on and setting them up for disaster. Sometimes the conversation needs to be had. Don't hide it because they're your friend. Friends are, should be able to have conversations like this too. Think about it from their perspective. Imagine being in love with someone and they never genuinely accept your feelings or feel the same way about you. I'm sure a lot of us have been through that one. It feels bad, right? And people will hold on to those feelings for such a long time that, yo, you just have to let them go now as a friend. 
they should understand. That's how I perceive it. That's how I would handle a situation because th that's how I handled mine. I felt like I was going to lose my friend regardless. I don't know. Do you guys disagree or, or agree with how I handled it? How would you guys handle it? I feel like my way is the easiest way without hurting people to an extreme, you know? Uh, this episode is found on Spotify and YouTube. Hey, Time hey, hey, hey. Nightmare, 7 a.m. in the morning, though. No surprise. Time Square is you and I under those lights. No disguise. Uh, don't tell me everything you wanted was a lie. All those city lights, it's an endless night. Never expect you to bring me so much life. Close my eyes too long, then it's time to say goodbye. Let's dance all night until the stars don't show glow. Till the sunrise, then we go so low. Making up for all the times that we were low. Let's make some memories before we do go. Let's dance all night. Locked away, it's filled with emotion Gave the key to you, right in front of you is open Hey, try your best to not leave it broken Oh, it's been a while since